Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm back with another FL Studio tutorial where I'm going to show you how to tempo sync any loop, whether it's a percussive or a melodic loop, how to lock it into your project tempo so that you can use a wide variety of loops instead of having to hunt for loops that are in the exact same BPM as your project. So let's get right into it. So I've quickly created this project at 122 BPM using some samples from a decap pack and it sounds like this. What I'm going to do is hunt for a drum loop to fit in with this. So I'm just going to go into the decap pack now. So if I go into the drum loop folder, uh, most sample packs will be, you know, they'll list the BPM like this and you'll have loads to choose from. So I like this one at 114, but that's obviously not my project tempo. So if I drag this into the project, although the style of the drum loop is really good, it's not going to match up with my project and this is going to sound completely out of sync. Pretty awful. The first thing you need to do this technique is the BPM of the sample. So most good sample packs have the BPM listed, but in case you don't have the BPM or it's a sample you've recorded or sampled from somewhere and you don't have the BPM, you're going to have to find it. And there's a really quick and simple way to do it. Up here in this little waveform icon at the top of the sample window, you just left click and then press detect tempo. It's as simple as that. Just give it a range to search between. I tend to start with 75 to 150, but you can pick a different range. It'll just take a second or two and it'll say the tempo's been detected as 114. Don't worry about these extra decimal points here. It's usually just the main value here, 114. Another way to get the tempo is to open up the channel rack, open up the sample wrapper here, right click on this waveform and press detect tempo and it will bring up uh, the same window as last time. So there's two different ways to do that. Now that we know the tempo of the sample, we're gonna lock it in to the project. So again, go up to this uh, icon here, this little waveform, left click and instead of detect tempo we're going to press fit to tempo and then we go down to this one here that says type in bpm so i'm going to select that and then we have to type in the bpm of the sample not of the project so i'm going to type in 114 and press enter and you'll see that it's actually locked it into uh, the grid now so if i press play So what has actually happened to lock it into the grid? So if I double left click, it'll pull open the wrapper. And in the time stretching box up here, this time dial has been adjusted. So if I turn this anti-clockwise, it shrinks my loop. And if I extend it, it makes the loop longer. And in this case, it used the tempo information to lock it in as an eight bar loop. If you right click on this dial, you can actually select specific numbers of bars. So say your sample has been recorded to be two bars long or four bars long, you can just select that and it will lock it right in. In this case, that's really fast because mine was actually an eight bar sample. Now there's lots of different time stretching modes, but I'm gonna demonstrate those on the melodic samples. If I now want to change the tempo of my whole project, it's gonna give us a few issues and I'll show you how to fix these. So if I press play, and I want to change my tempo. You're gonna, it just sounds awful, okay? Absolutely awful. So what we have to do is go up to tools at the top here, tools, macros, switch all audio clips to real time stretching. Now if I adjust the tempo, the project gets faster, but it doesn't start going out of tune or changing the key of the project or anything like that. Sounds really good. So that technique is all well and good for drum loops. Usually you can stretch a drum loop 10, 15, 20 BPM, and it usually sounds pretty good. It still sounds like kicks and snares. It's not, you know, crunching up the audio too badly. But with melodic loops, you have to be careful which stretching mode you use. So with this loop at the top here, if I go into the fruity wrapper again, and I set it to resample mode, and then if I select stretch up here, so I select focus audio clips, and then turn stretching on, I can stretch my loop here. And you'll notice that it changes the pitch as well as the speed of the sample. So the shorter my sample gets, 
the higher in pitch the sample gets, which is not what I want at all. Whereas if I go back into the wrapper and change the time stretching mode to stretch, it's going to adjust the speed, but the pitch is going to stay the same as it was before. It's just a lot faster, but it's the same pitch. I've just gone back to the drum loop now and I've lowered the tempo to 100 BPM so that the drum loop plays back a bit slower and we're going to listen to a few of the different stretching modes. So I'm just going to start with resample and let's take a listen. Stretch. That really radically changes how the kick sounds. If I change to one of these elastic modes, that really, really messes with the kick and the snare sounds really strange as well. So some of the modes, uh, even though they might sound worse on one sample, they can often sound better on another samples, especially when you're doing things like vocal pitching. If you're not really getting the pitched sound you want, definitely try uh, all of these different modes and see which sounds better for your specific sample. And the absolute final point to this is that if for some reason the BPM's not working, it's not a certain number of bars, it's just not working, just go up to the top of the playlist, make sure that you've got stretch selected here, and just manually try to adjust the loop. So if I really zoom in on the sample and look at my grid, you can see here's the first kick, and that's the first snare, and there's the second kick, and I can just see that the kick is too far forward. So if I go you know, to the end of my loop and I stretch the sample in a bit, I can take a look and see whether it's uh, whether it's fitting. So the first thing I would do is zoom in on this sample and once that I am zoomed in to a place where I can really see the kicks and the snares like this, usually I just cut a bit of the sample off because I don't need to see all of it. I'll cut that and I'll make sure that stretching is on and now I'm going to start lining up the kicks and the snares. So I can see that here's a kick, here's a snare and I really want my snare to fall on this line so you can just manually line it up until you're happy. This is, you know, quite a, a rough method, but, you know, it works. So let's see if this worked. Sounds pretty good to me. So that's it for this tip. It was a really simple and quick one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you find lots of use for it. And I hope to see you in the next video too. Bye for now.